Up until this point, we've been focusing on the poles and how they relate to the stability, but I've had some questions about what about the zeros, and so I'm gonna cover that briefly to get a sense for how these zeros can affect the system. And we're gonna go from the second order system, so do you watch the videos on second order time response, you'll see that we have some sort of after you have a step input, uh, input, step input, unit step input, then you get some sort of response out of it. And so those examples we gave earlier in that video had no poles in them. So they just had a constant in the, the numerator. So now we're gonna add a zero and see how that affects it. So say this is the response we've already looked at. So this is, you know, maybe critically damped. It, you know, starts at zero and kind of goes pretty well towards the reference point that we want it to. So we're gonna call this C of S. And if we added, so maybe this has, you know, it's a second order system. And if we add a zero, essentially what all we do is multiply it by our zero in the transfer function. So if we, this is our zero, we wanna add a zero at negative A here, right? So the zero here would be negative A then all we have to do is multiply these together. So our new system with a zero would be C of S multiplied by S plus A. Okay, so that would give us S times C S plus A times C S. This, in short, is the derivative of the response that we already know. And this is a scaled version of the existing response. So we have to know a little bit about these values and how they relate. But first, let's look at the um, derivative here. So let's just, so if we take this response and we look at the derivative, we will get something like, okay, so here where the slope is pretty steep, and then it starts to go towards zero again. So we'll look something maybe like this. And I recommend doing this on MATLAB because my drawing skills are not very good. So you can look at the derivative here. And then here's an approximate of the derivative. Okay, right, so this would be our SCS, this blue line here. And then A, we'd have some sort of scalar and CS. So first let's take the case where a, the zero, is very negative. So our whole, or sorry, our pole is in the negative, a very high negative value. So we have, this is our negative a here. And our negative a here would be very, very large. Right, sorry, no, so negative a is the s. This is the zero. a is just a very large value. So this would dominate. So you would pretty much get the same CS. And you know this thing, so this would be scaled up very large, and then this would be a very small effect on it. So you'd essentially get the same uh, response, and maybe just you know a little bit of a some hump at the beginning here. So it affects it a little bit at the beginning, but then goes back to the normal response. Okay, so what if we take our zero in and we move it back in towards closer to the imaginary axis. Then, say it's over here, we move it here. And again, the value here is still negative a. Then we would be essentially, instead of this being a very large scale down, scaled, it's now it's scaled down, and then this has a larger effect on it. So maybe when we do the whole time response, it would have a larger effect on it. Maybe we see more of the hump coming through. Okay, something like that. The book has much better drawings, and you can do it on MATLAB too if you really want good visualizations of this. So those are okay. They affect mostly the startup conditions, and they're kind of annoying because they make it overshoot or they affect it a little bit. But the real problem comes in when our A actually goes to the right half plane. So, so far this was in the left half plane, and this is a right half plane. So what happens now when our pull moves over here? So just for, to give an example, saying maybe this is S 
um, minus 2 is our, our 0 here, so this is a 2, for example. And these guys are gone. Okay, so now we have a pole in the right half plane. Well, we still have a derivative term. And now our a is actually negative, so this say this is a negative 2, or say it was very large negative, sorry, a very small negative number. Then now these are actually taking away from each other. So this is a positive value, but this would be a negative value. And don't worry about the signs here, they're a little bit flipped, but the important thing is that they're in opposite directions. So now the derivative actually takes away from the normal response. So it's in the opposite direction. So I'm going to try to erase this as much as possible to make it a little bit clearer. Okay, and so now we have our zero affecting us in the negative, the opposing direction. So maybe something like that. But if we add those two signals together, we'll actually get a dip, dip in our system before we then rise back up to our normal operation. So what a right half plane zero can do is actually make our, when we do a startup condition, we actually have to, we decrease a little bit before we can increase back up. And so that's kind of like, if you wanna go up, you actually have to go down first and then go back up. So some systems do work like that and they have natural right half plane zeros and they can be troublesome in control especially if you have some sort of operating limits. Say you can't go negative here because some other part of your system will blow up or has, you know, can't deal with that. So what we can do in our controller, which will be the next set of videos, is to try to cancel this zero out. So if we have this zero here and we can add another controller and we can make an S over A here, sorry, S, plus a, the same value, we can actually try to cancel these terms out. So what we do is we try to use our controller to make a pull directly over that zero, which can be hard because sometimes that zero moves around. But anyway, that's, the short story is right half plane zeros are troublesome, and so we often use controllers to try to negate them so that we don't get this kind of dipping initial conditions in our step functions, our step responses. Okay, so I hope that helps with the explanation of zeros, and I guess I'll stop here.